Okay, good morning. Recording? Yes, we are. Okay, uh, we will call the February 16th State Board of Landscape Architects meeting um, to order at 9.36. And I will follow the agenda. And we have a review of the meeting minutes of November 17th, 2020, Board of Landscape Architects. Um, why don't we just make sure we go through board members present? So, Mark Aragoni present. Dominic Soltruda present. Um, Bob Kuzmich, Department of Consumer Protection present. Okay. Uh, Phil Barlow, we knew was not going to be here. And Ann Peniman may be joining the meeting um, in process. And um, for the record, also Pamela Brown, Investigations Division Director, present also. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. And then just for the record, Cynthia Fernandez, the DCP staff attorney, who is assigned to take a look at um, municipalities not accepting the landscape architectural stamp, did email um, first thing this morning, although she was planning on attending. Um, something came up personally and she cannot attend, but she did ask if I could have a conversation with her and she could update me on their plan, um, their approach for potentially crafting a letter to the municipalities, maybe a targeted um, audience, a letter explaining um, what the state law is regarding acceptance of the LA stamp. So that is in the works and she apologized for not being in attendance. So Dominic, did you review the meeting minutes? Yes, I did. Do you have any comments or changes? I don't have any, no. Okay, nor do I. Um, I will make a motion to approve the November 17th, 2020 meeting minutes. Dom, you want to second that? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Um, okay. Hold on, time out. Did you see that from Ann Peniman to all panelists, IT? Can you see or hear me? Oh. Can you see or hear me? No, we cannot. I do see that now. How did she get into the chat without video or? That is a good question. And I had the minutes or the agenda up. So I she think can see. It. Oh, I can see you and hear you. She can see us. Well, how was that? Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can. Because she's not even listed as a participant. No, I was just doing that. Uh, attendees, let's see. And Peniman, here we go. Promote the panelists. Let's try that. Here we go. She goes. Unmute. <laughs> Unmute, Ann. Okay. There she there is. Hi. <laughs> I was here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Can you? Morning. Can, Morning. Dan, can can you officially make yourself um, present today? Ann Peniman is present. Great. <laughs> did you have any comments on the meeting minutes from our last meeting? I did not. They look perfect. Okay, so we can just we can move ahead. All right, we are on. Uh, number two, agenda, comments, concerns of any person present today? Do not think we have anything. Um, number three, DCP investigation division complaint status. Uh, Pamela did jump on the call earlier and told us that there were none. And if we, if we had any questions for her that we could um, get her back on the call, but I do not believe we have anything to review there. Item four, old business, continuation um, of our involvement with UConn. Dom, do you have anything to add? Zero at this point. Okay. Uh, working, you know, I'm trying to get something together, but there's nothing, nothing to report there at this point. Probably. Yeah, and the only thing we thought that maybe we could do is take advantage of the, the Zoom or Teams capability, um, but understanding it's a it's a it's a difficult it's a difficult process at the moment okay you number two you mentioned in your notes um mark that uh you had some sort of a film or a presentation 
that you were thinking about using for the uh, UConn students? Yeah, that's right. I've been saying that for years, I believe. <laughs> and I think I actually do have it now because after the meeting, I sent an email out to my colleagues at Clark. I think I do have it. Um, let me forward that to the group. Thanks for reminding me, Ann. Um, but yeah, it's a it's basically an introductory, introductory um, description about the examination process and CLARB and yeah, I will forward that to the group this afternoon. Mark, what is it again? It's an email. It's a PowerPoint. To... It's a PowerPoint. Um, and it just basically explains CLARB and the exam. And, you know, it's an informational, you know, sort of a CLARB exam, LARE 101. But it's been updated and it's been used, you know, in multiple jurisdictions for the threat to licensure and things like that to explain the benefit of the examination process and all that stuff. So um, it's also been presented at other colleges and universities. Um, it, I think it'll be good. And maybe, maybe Dom, you can use that sort of as a- Yeah, as a, as a springboard or a basic. Yeah, as an entree. Great. Thank you. Um, old business number two, continuing continuation of discussion regarding the letter from Phil Doyle and his appearance at our last meeting. Bob, do you want to give an update? I think some of it ties into Cynthia Fernandez's um, request to be at this meeting and where we're going with that. Yeah, she, um, Cynthia sent me an email <clears throat> um, proposing that the, uh, the board and she craft um, a letter to be sent to building officials statewide addressing this issue specifically. That's essentially what she said in her email. And I thought, I, I kind of thought that was a good idea to start because that kind of gets right to it, you know, right to. Um, so she was supposed to be at this meeting. Um, she did send an email, Ann, that she couldn't make it um, for personal reasons, but I am going to touch base with her tomorrow. We're trying to find a time. And my main points to her are going to be, I don't want it to be a blanket email that just gets ignored because it's a mass email. I wanna make sure that it goes, there's some specificity to it and it goes to certain people like the building officials. I wanna make sure it goes to the planning and zoning department, the city engineers, municipal engineers. You know, I don't, I don't want it to be a blanket email. So I wanna make sure she understands that number one, it should be directed to the people that we know have not been accepting the LA stamp, but it should also go to the, the much broader much Can you broader. remind me who she is? She is the staff attorney okay. for DCP that's been assigned to this one. Okay. All right. Yeah, Mark, I agree with you on that one because you really need to send it to the, like you said, town planner, city planner, and then it has to go to at least, at least the town engineer or head of DPW because exactly. that's where those hiccups come in is where yeah. you've got some of those those hang-ons and then you know we can pro is it something that we're going to be able to post a copy of somewhere as well so sure we'll have to cite chapter and verse they have it yeah i mean it would be really nice once we get this letter um and i will not do it in a vacuum i'll make sure everybody has a chance to see it that we can post it you know even asla could post it why yeah. not you know it's going to be i'm a, sure they will you know what about sending it? What about also copying the like the first selectman or something like that? Somebody who's might have a little more pull or influence, you know. So if it just goes to the town planner, they may be able to sweep it under the rug. But if they if it goes to their the next step up, is that going to have more um, teeth in it? I don't know. Yeah, I think it could go two ways. One, they would have no idea what it is, or two, they would it could ask do it. Them. It could do exactly what you said. Yeah, yeah. I think re I think regulatory speaking, I think the first step is getting it to the people that I mean, first selectmen and mayors come and go a lot. Yeah. Faster. Some town managers come and go a lot faster. I agree with you. It's just going to be the, the amount of tooth that we require in here because we could, you know, that it's gonna be the, maybe the government entity and then also the the, the department entities. And then, um, you know, we can rely on ASLA a little bit because they'll, if you get the letter, they're going to disseminate it to the world. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, I just, my goal is to let her know that we just, this isn't, this isn't just a, a first time offense and 
We want it to be a blanket email that gets filtered <laughs> out. This needs to be pretty pointed. Yes. Um, to put everybody on notice. Cause I mean, this has been going on for 20 years, if not longer. Right. All right. That's it for old business. Um, new business. Is it really true we have one application? Actually, uh, Mark, if I may. Yeah. Um, I have another application that I would like the board to consider. I think I sent out the credentials yeah. uh, right. earlier last week for uh, LAR0001569, <clears throat> Mr. Jonathan D. Cave. That's right. Also applying for initial licenses. It was my apologies and oversight on my part that it was not listed on the agenda, but I did send his credentials out. Um, credential okay. summary and credential detail from CLARB. That's right. I do have it saved here. Does everybody, Ann and Dom, do you have that? I, have. I, might need, I need to pull that up. Um, I'm pulling mine up too. And if you can't find it, I have it handy. So I could probably shoot it to you. What we, date was, was that on the 10th as well? When the when it was sent in? Yes. Uh, let me check. Oh yeah, I've got it here now. Jonathan Cave. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mark, if I may um, interrupt for one second, if you could, we should uh, the board should take a vote to add this person, this uh, Mr. Uh, Cave, to the agenda. If, if so, sure. We're fine. Sure, I'll make a motion to add um, applicant. Cave to the agenda under new business for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Does everybody have uh, Mr. Caves up? Because we can start with that one. Sure. Uh, So is he um, out of Boston? He's in Boston? He's in Cambridge. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He comes from a uh, accredited uh, background as well, from what I've gathered in here. Boston Architectural Cre College? Masters, yeah. Yeah, and they're accredited for both. Okay. Good grades. I like how they give you definitions of all their grades. Yeah, I got so confused when I looked at this because I somehow must have went right to the first, the second page. And I'm like, wait a minute, yeah, unacceptable or missing work. Look at this guy. What's going on? Thank it's you. It's just I the way to... that Clark loaded. It should have been at the end. Yeah. It breaks up his transcript. So it just... Okay. Dates of employment, 4 1 2018. Yeah, he meets the two year requirement. Two and a half, right? Mm -hmm. Not in New York, though. Hold on a sec. <clears throat> I'm just going to write something. Let me two seconds. So so I think I lost you guys somehow. I don't see anybody anymore, but you can hear me. Can you and hear see us? you? We can see you too. We can hear and see you. <laughs> I don't know where you are. Uh, okay, there we go. Yeah, click on the little blue and white yep. video camera. I had two right different here. Zoom things going on. Okay. <laughs> now, up, he's, another, he's another person who's applying from out of state with no connection to Connecticut. 
Not that we can see on application. Correct. And we're kind of blind on that one, but I got a question. Um, he passed his first exam in 2019. And am I, am I seeing that his dates of employment are 2018 to 2020? That means he sat for the exam before his two years under direct supervision. Am I right in that? Sounds like it. He passed three sections in 2019. Um, so he, and could it have been all of 2018? Well, it's still not two years, is Dates it? Dates of employment, April 1st, 2018 to 12-10-2020. Yep, yep. Yep. Well, it's that conundrum we discussed last time and uh, trying to figure out how to get CLARB to acknowledge that they shouldn't be letting anybody yeah. sit for a test before two years of employment. Well, you know what, uh, if I may, if you look at the regulations, I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't think it is either. It's not, it's not specific as to when that has to be accrued. It has to be before they apply for the license. The, like the three steps of the stool have to be in place, the education, the experience, and the exam. But I've gone back a couple of times, I think, uh, you know, to check, and it doesn't specifically state that the experience must be accrued prior to sitting for the test. It does state that it has to be in place when you apply to, for the license. So, so basically, I, don't, I can graduate from college and take the exam the next go-around and pass it? But you cannot apply for li for licensure until you have your two years of experience. And Dom, here's the point on that one. I guess the it's a because it is that three pronged approach, right? You need to have all three to get licensed. Correct. If you can pass the exam, you're you have one prong of the of your license. If you graduate from a accredited degree or a degree in which the board believes is adequate. You have the second, if you have your two years of experience, you have your third. I don't know if there is an order. I don't know if there needs to be an order, I, but. And, and I'm gonna go from experience. I, I didn't think I could even sit for the exam until after I got my two years under the direct supervision. I will 100% agree with you. That is exactly what I thought too. But I also don't think I would have passed it if I didn't have two years of two years of we didn't do a whole lot of grading i can tell you that so yes some of the uh sections are harder than others some of the sections require more experience than others right some are mm -hmm. more yeah. like book learning yeah. versus yeah practical yeah. experience mm -hmm. and it's changed i mean the history part of yeah. it is pretty much gone now and that's the part that i would have taken immediately if i could have or plant ID that was a part on my exam, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. decades ago. <laughs> so yeah, I, think there, I think there has, and basically, I think from to Bob's point is we have to look at everything not not necessarily with the lens of what comes first, but with the lens of do they meet all three? That's that's what our task is as a board. We have to sort of blur the line of what comes first. Um, cause we're not yeah. going to straighten that out right now. We have to look at it. Do they meet all three? And if we collectively have an issue, we should not feel uncomfortable saying, no, I, we need to ask. And we have asked for more information in the past. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make a comment because, and I agree right now he meets the criteria, unfortunately, but, but my, my question is going to be to you, Bob and the DCP. I like someone to go back and, and, and I want to see what, what the requirements were 10 years ago for a degree, because I think some things have been watered down over time, possibly by the regulatory and the legal aspects of DCP, possibly by the, the change in, in, in the license five or six or seven years ago now, whatever it may be. Um, because those standards, hold on a second, I got people calling me, I got to hang up on. Um, I don't think it was the intent that you immediately graduate from accredited university and take the test. That being said, I don't think we're gonna hold people up for that because we have to go based on what is 
in the, in the actual documents that we're dealing with right now, black and white. And I get that, but I'd like to understand when that was, you know, we all had the question and then this is minus the, the, the candidate we're looking at right now. Maybe we bring it up some other time. We just address the candidates. We were all under the impression that we had references at one point, those are gone. We were all under the impression that we had, um, you know, we saw say, we understand there's some issues with CLARB and now we're coming down to people are graduating and being able to take the test right out of, right out of school, which I don't think was, was the intent of, of the law. The law was you go out and practice for a few years and then you are, you're, you know, the progression is you get your education, you get your experience, you take the test. And maybe I'm wrong, but there, I know that that I wouldn't have waited two years to take that test if I could have taken it earlier and it might've changed. Bob, do you think that's something that you can do a little homework on? Sure. Uh, it, there, there is a limited amount of uh, history in the regulation and statute itself. Uh, under the sections, as they change, there's legislative, um, there's a legislative uh, kind of a path as, as, you know, public acts and what forth. I, you know, we could start with that, but I can certainly look into that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just so we know for sure what it is, because I couldn't yeah. tell you 100% no. for sure. But I... I the only reason it, I, I, it comes to mind is, you know, when I, the questions come up in recent years, and I, you know, I look at the law, the regulate, you know, the regulation statute, and the application, and it, it doesn't, it, it, to my knowledge, it didn't specifically state when that experience has to be um, accrued. As a matter of fact, Mark, I don't know if uh, Vince commented on that a couple of times. I mean, that's come up when Vince was chair. And do you uh, remember? Do you remember what? You remember what the... also he he had talked about. You know that three-legged stool, um, and and I think you know it's like you know basically what it comes down to is he said you know I, I don't know if he said this exactly but you know why what do we care they're coming to us with the elements that they need to get a license and in which order they got it in you know why I, I, I may be taking it out of context but I recall that conversation with Vince you know many yeah times. I think that's I think that's how we are set up currently I do I feel like that's how we are and you know if it's something that we want to bat around as a, as a commission yeah. or as a board to say, is that we can. Um, but I think right now focused on how we're set up, I think we yeah. got to act on these applications, but it should, oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm glad we're talking about it because number one, Bob's going to verify it for sure. Yeah, I can um, certainly look into that. Yes. Yeah, I will. Um, Would that have to go back to the statute or the regulation or what, if we, we wanted to really uh, make some changes on this? That would depend on what, what the history shows, and I'd have to look into that and see. If it's a statutory change, then that, that's a legislative change. That goes, you know, that goes through the department of the legislature. Regulations are a little easier to change uh, than statute. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, so it, it could, I it, don't really know. could it really could have been a historical interpretation that, you know. Here we go. Any just... person who has completed the course of study in and been graduated from a college or school of landscape architecture or by the landscape architectural accreditation board may apply for such examination provided such person shall submit evidence of a minimum of two years practical experience. Okay. That's the law. I don't care what the regulation states. I'll be completely honest with you because that's made up in DCP clouded area. Okay. With legal jumbo, the law trumps your regulations. And that's what our charge is. I mean, it trumps the DCP regulation. So we need to have someone check that. We can approve this gentleman and I don't have a problem doing that. And I'll say it out loud because he comes from an accredited university, but he really shouldn't be taking that until you, de fact, I, and I knew it was somewhere. It's in yeah. the regulation. It's a section 20-370 examination for licensure and the fee associated with in our regulation. Well, how do we, how do we I'm a little sick and tired of this. I mean, this is ridiculous. That we how do we communicate with these people in Massachusetts who <laughs> don't have a clue that they're going to apply, you know, they're, a year or so down well, the line? We just, reading, I don't think we have a problem with mass. They're, they're reading chapter and verse on our regulations and it states you can take the exam based on, 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 on the application. The application doesn't say it. it's people are reading it verbatim, but the law doesn't doesn't apply to the regulation. So we had talked about last time, looking not specifically for this, but making changes to the application to be a little bit more specific. 
Yep. Is this something that we, I can't remember what exactly we were talking about to clarify on the actual application, but is this something that, you know, we know they're going to have to look at the application. If there is a description within the application, the application may be easier to change than anything as far as a clarification. And, and just speaking such, and we, something I discussed with, with Mark uh, on another call, not to do with CLARB, I'm not I'm sorry, not to do with the board. The reason, the rationale, we found the, the indicator in Massachusetts. Massachusetts requires, if you're not accredited, they require three years. This I think is another aspect. Right. In Massachusetts, it's still two years from accredited. However, their states, two years, like I thought our states, then you sit for the exam. If you want to streamline your professional process, I'm apply to Connecticut. Right. I know. I know that's been an issue. I'm just saying if, if this guy was allowed to sit for the exam, then there was, he slipped through the cracks in Massachusetts because he clearly sat for the exam in Massachusetts. Yeah, but I don't think he's even licensed in Massachusetts. It doesn't matter. He probably no, he's not. He probably, he's not took the exam in, he probably took the exam in Connecticut. I see. So he shouldn't have been able to take the exam. There should be some automatic like uh, default where you get kicked out of the system if you can't show your experience. And the issue, yeah, I mean, the issue is with that, every state in the union has different requirements. So mm -hmm. in order to in, in order to push back and say CLARB has to be the clearinghouse, that becomes extremely difficult because there are so many bizarro requirements in every other state right. that, you know, right now it's being handled on a case by case basis. But it does put us in a weird situation, which we've been saying. All right. Well, I don't think I think it's a it's a it's a story for that we have to handle outside of this business. We have to go based on the merits of this gentleman um, and the Jonathan D David Cave. Yep, based upon his three his three the three legged stool here. Yep. Meets all three. But, but I also think we should go on record when we make a motion to approve this that. Um, this is a singular case uh, basis, and I'll, I'll be the first one. I'm not. I'm going to vote in the yay, but I'm going to tell you right now that it shouldn't. It shouldn't be a precedent uh, based on on what we're seeing here because he took the exam a year when did he graduate? He graduated in December 2017. He started working right after 18, 18, 19, 19, and 20. So he's two years out of, out, of, out of college, which is fine. Um, credited college, that's fine. I don't have a problem. He's done what he's done in terms of looking at the criteria for Connecticut to get licensed, and, and thus, thus happens. Um, I'll tell you right now, within six months, he'll be licensed in Massachusetts. Via I am tracking that time. So you're correct. Through yeah. reciprocity. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to make a motion on Jonathan, we're going to do these individually because they only have two but Jonathan Correct. David, Jonathan David cave, I will make a motion that the board approve um, his application. And I will also like to make a note on the approval that we reviewed this only as an individual application with specific detail being paid attention to with years of experience when the exam was passed. And is accredited um, degree. Correct. If we can just make that note, I think that's fine. Yep. So I made that motion. Could I second. ask one question? Oh, yep. go ahead. No, no, you can make a motion a second. Now you can ask questions. Yeah. Okay. So, are we setting a precedent by approving this that we should be approving anybody else who who uh, applies for the license? Under the similar circumstances, I think I think we can amend the motion to say that we're approving this on a single case basis, and that should be noted, and that we need to investigate our DCP application in term versus the, the the law because I have a feeling there's something wrong there, and they're they don't read the law. You know, an applicant doesn't read the law; they're reading the application that states I just need to have these three. It's watered down on there, and, and it may not, I'm not saying it's watered down; it might not be. Maybe the law has been tweaked and adjusted. I'm learning a lot in the last couple of years in terms of regulation versus law. 
Okay, um, so just just for the purposes of Bob having to make yep. notes on this one. So Bob, I think you're good with the motion, but we wanted to add in there just that we will continue. It's a this is an individual case basis, um, and we will continue. The board is going to continue to look at making clarifications on the application with regards to law versus regulation. So just to back up, so the second was Ann, right? Uh, no. Mark, you, you motion was... first, Ann? Uh, second. Dom, second. Um, okay, hang on, let me get that right. And then the note's going to be that the application was approved on a single case basis in particular, the work uh, in, with respect to the work experience accrued prior to um, accrued um, before sitting for the exam, or in other words, work experience not completed. That. Right, work experience. I want to say we approved we we approved it. We approved his application based on his congregate experience, passing the exam, and his education. That's what we approved it on. However, we still, the board is still going to investigate providing clarification on experience prior to sitting for exam. Something like, I think we want to make sure that we put it in there. Okay. So it's, it, 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 you know, we are going to look at these on a case by case. If we had an issue with his experience or it was a non accredited university, we're going to look at those. In this particular case, yeah, it met all three. However, we feel our state law says you need to have your two years before you sit. Okay. So the problem is people just go merrily about applying for this or, you know, applying to take the exam. And there's nothing that kicks them out from applying to take the exam. And they go ahead and they take the exam and then they go read the special provisions for applying for the Connecticut license. And then they find out, you know, it's like you can't undo this guy's order of work. Let's, At, we, got, and we, I, we have a motion in a second we're discussing still? Is that what we're doing? We're discussing still. Okay. Yeah, and because I think Ann's concern is uh, setting precedence for the next person. I and agree, it, I mean, when you, yeah. and I haven't applied for a Clark Council record in a long time because I was already licensed when I got mine. Um, do they ask you what jurisdiction you're registering for when you apply for the initial Clark Council record? Because the I don't, I don't believe Clark so. Council record is you're going to become licensed at some point if you're not already. So if I live in Pigs Knuckle, Arkansas, and I apply for a council record, they're not applying a state to it at that point, correct? Just just your where you where you live, I think, is the only thing that they okay okay. Yeah. So I just want to touch upon Ann's comment about um, the merrily applying for, <laughs> for, to take the test or, and I think what we don't know is how many, we're only seeing these few that have sort of got through, you know, yeah. he had a year of experience, he sat for his test, he passed his test, he graduated from, so we, yeah, well, for all intents and purposes, that one snuck through. We're not seeing how many are being denied up front. We, we don't know. We don't see those until we get the ones that come through with the CLARB record and having passed the exam. So there may be, and I don't know this for a fact, but there may they may be denying people quite a bit or saying, no, you need to get more experience or you need to do that. So that's what we don't know. We're only seeing the ones that come to us with the past exam. Correct. We don't see the and ones that come to us with a failed exam or yeah. no, you can't take it. You know, we don't know that. So we're only seeing the few that come through. On a positive and, in, and, in, and in Clark's defense, if they're going by our application, it doesn't say that you can't even take it until you're two years out. Where another state could say, you know what, you can't take I don't think any state tells them you can take it right after you graduate. I'm going to tell you that right now. Yeah, I've seen a lot of them. And I think they're looking at our our, 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 our application saying, well, yeah, you can take it right out, right out of the back. Because like you said, it's a three-legged stool. So we'll have to investigate this. But this, this is a standalone yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna take them in a case by case, and I think that we've documented that we're discussing it, and our opinions may change based yep. upon some clarifications that we get. But right now, 
or acting upon his, his right. congregate merits. So I, I have one more question. I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but let's say we rejected this guy based on, we're not going to, but let's say we did based on um, the fact that he took the exam before he had his two years experience. There'd be no way for him to undo that. No, I technically you'd have to take the exam again, right? Okay, maybe that's uh, or or we have to. Well, he's got the two years too. He's got the two years. So now, then we'd make him retake the exam, which is, you know, for lack of a better term, silly. <laughs> <laughs> technically speaking, and, and I was yeah. thinking the same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I don't want to um, dismiss the board's requirements, but you know, what do you what do you do in a case like that? If, if someone's coming in. You know, transferring in that's already got the experience and you know, you know, I mean, yeah. so yeah, you know, right. I, I have to go back and our job is to make sure that we have minimal competent landscape architects practicing <laughs> in the state of Connecticut. Un that's what it is. I mean, we're protecting health, safety, and welfare by making sure that they satisfy the minimal competency to practice in the state of Connecticut. It sounds horrible when you use those terms, minimal competency, mm -hmm. but that's what it is. So in my, this is my opinion, if you pass the exam, you have more than two years of experience and you've graduated from what we feel is an acceptable program because we do have um, latitude in determining that, um, I think that proves minimal competency. And that's how we're, we're acting right now on this application. Um, but we are gonna continue to find clarification on this one. And if we can make some changes to make it clearer, we will. So we have a motion, we have a second, we've had discussion. Um, I think I can put it out to vote. Yes. Okay, all in favor of accepting and approving council record 61580. All those in favor. Will you call his name out also? Jonathan David Cave. Aye. 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 Approved, thank you. Bob, I can't wait to see the dis I can't wait to see the notes on that discussion. Yeah, I can't either. <laughs> I'm um, gonna be sending yeah. a lot of emails to you, Mark. Yeah, that's fine. If you want to <laughs> just throw something together and, and put Summarize. it out. It's, it's important. I mean, I think I understand where you're coming from on this. And while you were talking, everyone's talking. I'm in my mind, I'm like, okay, so really what am I going to say here? You know, we looked at this, the board looked at this application on its own merits and, and determined that this particular person they are going to approve, but yep. they don't want to set a precedent going forward for other candidates yep. that. Correct. Yeah. We I think want an asterisk it. on this one because we don't want someone to come back and, and say, this is legal precedent you guys are approving. At this yep. point. I think it's as simple as that. The next one's a lot easier. Yeah, so this is the, the next one is Don't Joseph, more. <laughs> Joseph Avini, council record 45942. Um, has anybody had a chance to review this application? I did, but I, for some reason, I don't have a copy of his um, exam record, his exam results. I assume he passed all four. And when did he take it? Now I'm, I'm, you know, the radar's up about the dates. No, he's, he, um, he took it in 2019. He graduated from UConn okay. in 2014. Okay, and he started working in 2016, so he's good. Yeah, he was a surveyor for a couple of years back. It looks like, you know, and, and he's mm -hmm. got bang from 14 to 16 at Stadia, and then he went 16 to 2020 at Langen as an architect. So he's, he's more mm -hmm. than exceeded it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. Was it a okay. bachelor's or was it a master's? It doesn't really matter. It's from an accredited institution. Yeah, he's, he's got a bachelor's. Like I, he's bachelor's. Like I said, he, uh, he meets or exceeds the requirements. Good. Yep. Yep. In my book. Yes. Yep. So I don't know. Checks all the boxes. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve uh, Joseph Avini, council record 45942. I second. second. Oh. You can have it, Anne. Anne Thanks, Tom. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Dom, did I get an eye out of you? Aye, aye sorry. <laughs> okay. All right.
right. Okay. Updated list of applications by waiver of examination. Um, we don't have to act on these. This is more of an informational. Bob, do you have anything to add? Um, I don't, Mark. They're, they're all in order. They're applied by waiver of exam reciprocity. Um, all of CLARB counsel, all of CLARB certificate records. Um, just a, a, an interesting note. There's one New York looking for reciprocity in Connecticut. <laughs> And that's fine. That that's probably yeah. a, uh -oh. you don't, I don't know where they were originally licensed, but okay. Six correspondence. Bob, we did get an email from Phil Barlow over the weekend. Oh yes, that. <clears throat> Uh, it was a, he was uh, asking on behalf of a, a colleague, it's a verification form to be filled out for Massachusetts. And you're um, okay with taking care of that? Just, yeah, I, I mean, with all due respect to the board, you know, usually the, it's just something that's administrative on my end. I yep. document the applicants, the licensees records and forward the form to, um, to Massachusetts. Yeah, good. It um, typically doesn't, only... doesn't require board interaction. Right. The only other correspondence... Like yeah, the only other correspondence that we had was from Cynthia Fernandez, and we talked about that earlier. She's the staff attorney for DCP, um, and we will I will follow up with her on that one. Um, and then that's under correspondence. And then I don't know if we want to do this. I don't know where we talk about where we have a continue our discussion on CEUs, Bob. But I guess we can put it under comments. We probably could have done it under old. Additional new business, you know, additional new business, however you want to categorize it. Yeah, let's keep it. Yeah, if we can, if we can go back um, to new business, sure. I would like to, I would like to continue our conversation with regards to, um, I believe we have two um, individuals who are seeking to reenact their license, I guess, reapply for active licensure. And they have both been out of practice and have had expired license in Connecticut for several years. One of them um, is over 10 years since they've practiced with an active license. And the other one is, is much smaller. I want to say three or four years, Bob. Yeah, I can't, offhand, I can't remember. I have to look back, but it was. Right. But they, they are different. And I think this goes on to the discussion and I, I wish Phil was here, so I'm, I'm not sure we're going to make any decisions on this one. But I did speak individually with, with all of you um, just to sort of continue this discussion because I do think it's important um, with regards to how many CEUs does the board feel um, would be sufficient or adequate, whatever adjective you want to use on that, um, as far as reinstatement of somebody who's been out of the profession. And we know that um, the individual who's been out of the profession for over 10 years submitted a, a very lengthy le letter and did a lot of research on if we were to require 24 credits for every two years that he's been out, it would be an exorbitant amount of CEUs. Um, and he did give explanation on why he was out of the business and things like that. I don't believe he was practicing landscape architecture. He just wants to get back in. <laughs> So I've done some thinking. I, I asked you guys to all do some thinking about what we thought made, made sense um, again. And I, I think that in, I'll, I'll start continuing conversation by saying, you know, at an absolute minimum, I think that having 24 CEUs for anyone that's been out of practice for two years makes a lot of sense that you come back to us with 24 CEUs <coughs> that show good faith that you've been keeping up with your you know, industry knowledge. And I think that makes sense because we work in two year periods for CEUs. So if you come back and you've been out for two years and you come back with 24 CEUs and we accept them, I think it's reinstatement is, is a possibility, strong possibility. Anything after two years, I think is where we get into the real discussion part, you know, is, is five years worse than 10 years. Um, and we get into that precedent setting um, potential category. And 
my my initial thought and this is for discussion is that we would anything after two years that we would require an additional 24 C, ceus so that that person whomever it may be anything over two years you're really coming back to the board with 48 because 48 is a lot of ceus and i think that if we start getting above 48 it becomes it becomes difficult um once I, we I, yeah anyways I so I, that's where i'll stop i mean I, I i i've got i'm new to this whole this whole situation i kind of agree with you mark um outside the ceu to be the explanation of what was going on i was i was you know i think i think i think moving forward it has to be a case-by-case -case basis agree some people get out for you know I'm, i raised a family some people get out for i did you know i had an illness some people get out well the economy was bad and I had to take a job, you know, over overland trucking. You know, you don't know, but at least we have an explanation, and then just a re-verification. Um, if they don't have a CLARB council record, which I don't know if you have force someone to do that if they've already been licensed in the state of Connecticut, but just a re-verification has to be done as well. You know, copy the transcript. You know, a, an explanation of why you haven't been licensed because we're at risk of somebody practicing without a license as well. So we got to run that. No, listen, I was doing other things or I was working for a firm who would not pay for it. Uh, we had another license in the office. I understand those things. And I don't think we want a barrier to practice. But if we're going by CEU justification, <clears throat> I don't have a problem with 48 hours as well as what you said, Mark. I just think, you know, they also have to go through, you know, I think it's a case by case basis at that point as my big, my big question on that. And I'd like to see you were licensed before. 10 years ago, our law was a little bit different. Uh, just tell us why, what happened, a nice letter from them. And then also um, some, you know, some, some justifications on that and maybe a copy of your transcript sent to us. So we have one on file that we, we might not have one on file right now because it was through, you know, you can't force them to get a CLARP record. We could recommend it. Yeah, no, we can't. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Don. Ann, do you have anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I think it, we can't be, to punishing on this. Um, and, and I think it's really important to consider the individual situations. Um, and, and we're so right with economies and, and whatever's going on in a person's personal life, you gotta take those things into account. I don't know if, um, you know, and I'm, but then I think about the fairness to everybody who's been practicing all along and keeping up with their CEOs and spending the time and the money to do it um, and their license and all that. Um, but what about if it, if we said something like, in addition to the 24 you have to have for the next two year period, what if we said in an additional five to 10 per year I don't know if it, that's an easier um, thing to bite off rather than just saying you have to have 48 period. I don't know. I'm just trying to think how a person can um, acquire all those. I mean, with all the webinars, you can definitely, yeah. you yeah, know, pick up CPUs yeah. in, in your personal time too, you know, like an hour after work or whatever. The other thing we need to do is if they're coming back and they're satisfying this within a time frame. This, this has to be, and, and this is more for Bob, is this has to be a follow-up. We're going to give you the license, but now we might have, this person is not going to be audited. They're going to be audited, but it's not a randomizer. It's, yeah. you, need to, you need to fulfill this or you will be unlicensed again. Right. So I don't know. I, I you know, I'm, I'm, I think you guys have a good sense for this. So I'm, I'm happy to go with however you think we ought to assign additional CEUs, I do def I definitely think we we need to assign additional ones in some yeah. way. Yeah. So uh, to your point, Anne, I, I think it's a it's a great comment, and I think my thought is I'd love to get to the point where they submit everything and we start fresh and they get back into the system like everybody else is. So say um, candidate X came back to us and and they had forty eight hours of CEUs all done that and we reissue that they start afresh and then they're on track with everybody else rather than as they move forward, they continue. And again, this goes along with Dominic's yep. point in, they're gonna give us an explanation and we're gonna be able to assess that explanation that they give us. Okay. 
but yeah. then everybody's back on track so that they they are officially in that two year 24 year or two year 24 20. ceu process just like everybody else's and it's also on the tracking side that that then puts you know, oh my god if somebody if we miss something on the tracking of it and that, that's a good that point get, that could get a little mucky too um i would love to just I think, Don, you brought up a good point. I don't know if we, 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 would, we will be setting a precedence, but we're talking about it and we're paying attention to us. We're human. You need to yep. submit us and tell us why. Everybody's got a different story. Mm -hmm. but I do think- and you don't have to get into particulars, you know? No. We, 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 it's, no. you know. But 24, I don't believe is fair to the practicing LA to say, oh, just come back with 24. I, ee, we want you to learn a little bit and come up to show us that you're back up to you know, understanding what the current status of the practice is. And uh, to me, for this, this particular, it seems like 48 makes sense. I agree. Yeah, okay. I'm with you. So we I have two, too. we have two individual cases though, Bob, right? Um, I thought it was one, Mark, one that went back um, like 10 years. Yeah, that's the one that I'm thinking. I thought we might've had one or, or did we, did we have one a couple years ago? It was a couple of years ago, I think. Yeah, and we, we've, we gone took back, we've gone back to, excuse me, he's gone, we, we've, I've had reinstatements where they've gone back to full periods, 48, you know, two, yeah. two bienniums, two, yep. you know, yep. that, that's what we call for, for each biennium that has passed. Yeah, I, so, I'm comfortable with that, and I have had conversations with Phil, too, um, so I don't know, Bob, do you need us to formally act on this, or are you going to get back to him and tell him um, that this is what was discussed? Do we have to make this a, a motion and an approval? No, I, I, it'll be noted in the minutes. Um, I, I will get back to the, to this applicant and let them know that, you know, that after discussion, the board is, um, you know, uh, going to require two bienniums, 20, uh, 48 mm -hmm. continuing education hours. So I guess my only concern is say this guy, you know, it's going to take him a little while, assuming right. that he's, he's already started. Um, he comes back and Ann and Dom and I aren't on the board anymore. And he says, wait a minute, somebody said 48 hours and the new board says, you know, 120. Is just having it in the minutes enough? Yeah. Okay. I think it is. Okay. Yeah, I think, the, I think the, it the is. other leg of that is, and, and this is me being the pessimist or the, yeah, the pessimist, um, you know, <laughs> Coming off, off 10 years, he probably has a valid excuse, and, and I don't really even need to get into that, but um, is there a mechanism that I means we are granting a license to practice in the state of Connecticut? And, and then within that, does it get referred to investigations just to make sure we don't have to follow up, but it's like, all right, because I, I, I'm, again, I'm being the, the minority here and saying, listen, was he working for Stantec for 10 years and the guy left? So now it has to get licensed because, I mean, that's just, you know, that's just a, for instance, you know, but yeah. I mean, then he was practicing that whole time technically without a license, well, even though you're, it's just a weird thing. We do, we do, we, we do require a notarized letter stating whether or not the individual has signed or sealed any drawings or otherwise practiced landscape architecture during that period. It's in the okay. station, okay. but we do require that. Question and we answer. do require a reason why why the individual's license lapsed and what were they doing? I mean, yeah, we, okay. we have we have that all documented. That's, okay, perfect. that's as it stands now. Perfect. Yeah, so yeah I'm, I'm perfect. pretty comfortable that we, I'm glad we we talked about it. I'm glad everybody <coughs> had a little time to think about it. Dom less than others. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. You guys, are, you guys have it, so. We're, we're um, okay, so that'll be formalized in the meeting minutes at least. And Phil will be able to read that too. Okay. Yep. Um, and then we have uh, six was correspondence, seven was comments um, of any person present today. I don't believe we have any. And does anybody have anything else to add? I will definitely send um, that presentation out for um, CLARB and the exam process. Um, I'll send it to the, to the board and Bob, so you'll have it too. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, it, hearing no other comments, um, we will officially close this meeting at 1030. Good. Second. <laughs> and, 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 and you win for the, uh, the background. Oh yeah. 
we're in, we're up in Maine at our cabin, and it's. Uh, I was hoping for more snow today, and we're getting rain, so it's a yeah. little distressing. Yeah, but well, no complaints. <laughs> I'm on vacation this week, by the way. So yeah, well, thank you very much. Thank you. I, oh. I was oh, I was reaching, make sure I was reaching to get you here. No, it's perfect. You know, that's the beauty of Zoom. I didn't have to be in Hartford. I, great, great, <laughs> it's terrific. Thank you all. all. Right. Well, Just enjoy so the that rest I got of into the room. <laughs> enjoy the rest of the week. Thanks, okay. Tom. Thanks, Bob. Good to see you all. Have a good week. Thank you, Mark. You too. Bye. See you next time. Bye.